Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship at Trinity Lutheran Church, a reconciling in Christ congregation that welcomes all of God's children with all of our diverse gifts, backgrounds, and life experiences. Please know that we welcome you as you are and are here to help each other grow to serve. For those who are visiting, and I know we have a number of visitors here this morning, your bulletin will serve as a guide for taking you through the service as well as having some important contact information for you should you need it. We do want to know that you're here, um, so if you have not already had a chance to complete the, put your information into the iPads, laptops, in the fellowship hall, um, invite you to aim your cell phone at the QR code. It will take you to a digital connect information card where you can update some information. If you prefer the old school pen and paper, we do have the green visitor cards in the pew. Simply fill one of these out, drop it in the offering plate during the time of the offering. If you would like to support us in reaching out to our community through service, outreach, and worship, you are again welcome to scan the QR code that is in the middle of the bulletin in the offering section, or simply drop your gift in the offering plate. If you would like to have somebody mentioned in the prayers of the church today, and you have not had an opportunity to put that person's name on a QR code, Violet is actually coming down the center aisle. She is holding a post-it note. If you would, please just raise your hand and you can include that person for the prayers of intercession this morning. Everyone worshiping with us today is welcome to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion. You do not need to be a member of this church or any church to come to God's table. If you are watching live stream, you are invited to receive the sacrament when you see it here in the sanctuary. For those in the sanctuary, you may come forward for communion or stay in your pew. If you opt to stay in your pew, you will need a communion kit. Um, so if you do not have a communion kit bag, again, Violet is holding one and can provide that for you. Pastor Paul will be providing more instructions for those who want to come down during the time of communion. For all of our regularly scheduled weekly events and serving opportunities, I invite you to check out the Gretchen designed bulletin board in the fellowship hall, but also the month of August newsletter has come out. These are also available in the fellowship hall. If you would like to receive these electronically, again, on that QR code, the digital connect card, just please indicate that information and Leah will be sure to get those to you on a monthly basis. So just to give you a temperature update for the sanctuary, 
Last week we attempted this, but apparently it didn't work out well and it ended up being warmer across the board. So what we have done, we have adjusted the thermostats so that it's a little cooler on this side, on the south side, so if you prefer it to be cooler, sit over here. If you do want it warmer, it'll be over on the right-hand side, although I do see Gretchen fanning on the south side, so we'll continue to work on this. <laughs> Um, Karen has asked me to announce that the Band of Angels will be meeting after service next week to discuss Bold Women Sunday. So if you are interested in participating in that, please join the Band of Angels next week. Today we are going to honor the life and legacy of Ann Gibson. So following this service, we're going to have the short coffee fellowship hour, but at one o'clock we will have the memorial service in here followed by a luncheon on the third floor. Um, Gretchen and her team has done a phenomenal job, not only in terms of decorating and getting that ready, but also we have plenty of food. So if you are visiting with us today, please feel free to join us on the third floor following that memorial service. Next Sunday, our Bishop Pedro Suarez will be leading worship at Hope Lutheran Church so if you are interested in attending two services, um, at 9.30, please go to Hope. Pedro Suarez will be presiding and preaching. And then, of course, come here for our 11 o'clock service. For those who have not heard, and if you did not receive Pastor Paul's email announcement this week, our dear friend and sister in Christ, Arlene James, has passed. It was pretty sudden. In fact, I understood than that she was playing cards with Carol as of last Sunday, or a word game that they normally do. So it was pretty fast for her. We invite you to keep her family in prayer. Once we have all the information about a memorial service, we will definitely pass that information on to you. This week, we want to wish a happy birthday to Shirley Tyre, Tyler and to Greg Daniels. Trudy, are you here today? Greg is Trudy's husband. So if you know Trudy, um, it, it is her husband's birthday today. Anybody else celebrating a birthday or an anniversary? All right. Any other announcements that need to be made at this time? All right, hearing none, I invite you to silence your cell phones and prepare your hearts and minds for worship.
Psalm 145 celebrates a God who satisfies the desire of every living thing. The letter to the Romans laments the fact that we often aren't willing to accept God's love. And in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus shows what people of faith can do with five loaves of bread and two fish. Let us pray. Generous God, you water the world with goodness and cover creation with abundance. 
awaken in us a hunger for food that satisfies both body and spirit, and with this food fill us that we may feed a starving world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I'm just going to turn it off and we'll just yell. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
from the letter to the Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenant, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them according to the flesh comes the Messiah who is over all God blessed forever amen word of God word of life thanks, thanks be to God, God. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, 
he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Most of us will acknowledge that we have experienced miracles in the course of our lives, but the miracles described in the Bible will really make us uncomfortable. I mean, it's one thing when Jesus heals somebody. It's quite another when he turns water into wine, controls the weather, walks on water, and feeds a large crowd with a little bit of bread and fish. We try to tame the miracle stories or explain them away. A popular theory about the one we heard today is that Jesus' actions inspired everyone in the crowd to share their food with the people around them, which is a very nice idea. But first century people didn't have to explain the miracles. They just celebrated them. They believed that God had complete control over creation and that God could do whatever God wanted with it. I mean, according to the Old Testament, God could make the sun stop in its path across the sky and even reverse course for a while. What's feeding a crowd of people compared to that? This story of Jesus feeding a multitude is found in all four of our Gospels. Every author who wanted to inspire their faith community with a book about Jesus thought this story needed to be included. The Gospels of Matthew and Mark say that Jesus did it twice. So maybe the question isn't if Jesus did the miracle or how Jesus did it, but why? Why give people a satisfying meal on one day, knowing that they would be starving again tomorrow. If he really wanted to change people's lives for the better, Jesus could have overturned the financial oppression of the Roman Empire. I mean, that's what John the Baptist expected him to do. When John proclaimed that the kingdom of heaven was near, he was imagining a military rescue of God's people from the armies of Rome. When Jesus proclaimed the coming of the kingdom, he was talking about God's plan to completely transform a world that is oppressed by sin and fear and guilt and shame. God working to change the world as we know it. Jesus described this plan of salvation using parables of the kingdom. But after John was killed by a puppet king put in place by the Romans, Jesus started demonstrating what an alternative empire might look like. It would be a community without hunger, without disease or poverty, like what the Old Testament prophet Isaiah had described in words addressed to an earlier generation traumatized by conquest destruction, death, and exile. Even though those people believed that those events had happened as punishment for their sins, the prophet insists that God hasn't abandoned them. God still has plans to use the people of Israel for the transformation of the whole world. So in the spiritual and emotional poverty of exile, the people are invited to feast upon God's abundant love and mercy. People without money are invited to buy without money and without price. People with money are told they're spending it on the wrong stuff. 
Both statements are then connected to listening to God and being nourished by what we hear so that the whole world can be drawn closer to God. We work awfully hard to have the money to buy stuff for ourselves and for our families. The Bible invites us to work just as hard to have a life that is truly satisfying. If, as the psalm says, God is able to satisfy the desire of every living thing, then for human beings, that would be the desire to find meaning and purpose in our lives, to know that we are seen and that we matter and that we are being guided toward fulfillment. The psalm claims that everyone who fears and calls upon God is heard. Since we're the only creatures capable of rejecting God's love or refusing it, maybe it's better to say that God will take care of anyone who just permits God to do so. But as the Apostle Paul laments, it is hard for us to simply accept God's compassion and care as a gift. We'd really like to feel like we had earned it. And if it's a free gift for everybody, who knows who's going to be sitting next to you at the table. Jesus invites all of us to come together and to sit down, to feast on divine love demonstrated by his willingness to offer his own body and blood for our rescue. At another meal with those disciples, Jesus asks them to remember him in the sharing of bread and wine. Just as he did for this multitude out in the wilderness, Jesus takes bread, blesses and breaks it, and offers it to everyone. And as followers of Jesus, maybe the best way for us to remember him is by pondering those words he said to the disciples, they need not go away, you give them something to eat. Even back in the first century, Jesus thought that people of faith could control hunger and combat it. In the 21st century, human beings are without question capable of eliminating starvation, disease, and poverty throughout the world. We now have the skills and the resources to accomplish it, we only lack the willingness to make the necessary sacrifices. So maybe what we need is a miracle.
forgive the expression, but is dying to satisfy the deepest desires of your heart, then that's the faith I invite you to confess, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father of my youth, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died in his burial. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. No, the microphones are not on, so use your outside voices, please. <clears throat> Confident that God receives our joys and our concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. You gather your church. Inspire us to proclaim your love as we serve our neighbor in our words and deeds. Hear us, O God. And your mercy is great. You cherish your creation. Teach us to protect fragile ecosystems, nurture living things, and care for all you have created. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is very great. You desire peace and justice instill within us and our chosen leaders a will to work for the common good and to provide relief to all who are suffering. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You comfort those who are hurting. Send us to those who are alone and those who are sick or suffering in any way, especially Sherry Ann Thompson, Patty Davis, Peter and Faith Dunn, for Abby Rubenfeld in the loss of her brother, for the family of Arlene James, for Jim and Lynn Talon, Stacy and Toby, Andrea, Jeanette, Cheryl and Doug Bailey, Charlie and Lori Long, Maureen Smith, Anna Murphy, the main Carter family, the Nunnally family, for the Fox family, the Womack family, the Allen family, the Arnold family, Walter Feiner, Bill Frogman, Donovan Smith, Anne Stephankovich, Diane and Phil Hinton, Rick and Jennifer Jackson, Lady Ann and Mark Mendelhoff, Vicki Clark, Bill and Ryan Dyke. Hear us, O oh God. You place us within communities of mutual support and love. Reveal yourself as we share your abundance with all who hunger. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You have placed before us examples of faithful living. Rouse us by their lives of service and dedication to be your hands and feet in this world. Hear us, O God. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. In these spoken prayers, in the prayers of our hearts, in any prayers that we feel compelled to offer at this time, we commend all for whom we pray in the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. I invite you to stand and offer signs of that peace to one another, recognizing that not everybody's ready for you to hug them yet.
or even shake your hand, but show them you love them, somehow. And then you can be seated so we can receive your offerings for God's work in the world. that we 
should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. everybody, regardless of where you're coming from and what's going on in your life. <clears throat> if you're going to stay in your seats for communion, you need to get out that little kit and figure out which side of it holds the bread, peel back the cover on that side. It is the body of Christ given for you. Then flip the kit over, peel back the cover on the other side. It is the blood of Christ shed for you. If you're coming forward, you'll come down the middle aisle to me. You'll either help yourself to another a communion kit here, and I'll talk you through how to open it, or you'll just hold out your hands to me. I'll put a little morsel of bread in it. You'll then take that bread to Violet or to Alan. They're holding a metal chalice that has wine in it and a glass one that contains juice. You dip your bread into one of those before you eat it. You can stay at the rail for prayer or just go back to your seat. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you.
the price given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you.
Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As you're able to do so, and as it's easy, I invite you to stand to receive God's blessing on your life. The God who calls across the universe and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.